The Lord be with you. In our prayers today, prayers for sympathy, you will hear the name Louise Martin. Does anyone remember Louise Martin? Oh, a few. Thank you. <laughs> she uh, moved away in 2008 down to Texas to be with her daughter after her husband died, and then to Virginia in 2011, and now she's coming back to Messiah to, be, to have her funeral. So her funeral will be Thursday at 11.30. Our uh, Lenten theme, we're on the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Our text, our gospel text, assigned for the second Sunday in Lent, comes from Luke 13. The notable verse is that one where Jesus laments over Jerusalem and said, I desired to gather you together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. So um, we'll use that as a springboard into the third commandment when we talk about work and rest. Prepare your hearts, let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who brings us safely through the sea, who gives us water from the rock, who leads us into the land of milk and honey. Amen. Let us come home to God, confessing our sin. Merciful Father, we have sinned against heaven and before you. We do not fully live as your sons and daughters. We use your gifts to our own ends. Forgive us and restore us, that we may resist all that draws us away from you and be at peace with one another. Amen. We are reconciled to God through Christ. For his sake, God does not count our trespasses against us. Once dead in sin, we are now alive to God. Once lost, we are now found. God clothes you in the finest robe of all, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, forgiving you all your sins and making of you a new creation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
15th chapter of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, no one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, and a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down, and it was a dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading is from the third chapter of Philippians. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things but our citizenship is in heaven and it is from there that we are expecting a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to, to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children up. Yeah, come on, Zane. I should have brought in a chicken today. This is a chicken. Do you know why I have a picture of a chicken? Because Jesus lamented over Jerusalem. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How often have I desired to gather your children together, meaning all the people of Jerusalem, as a hen gathers her chicks. A hen puts out her, her, uh, her wings like this and starts cackling, and the chicks all go scampering and they get under the wings so they can be protected. Let me show you a picture. This is an old famous painting of a hen who had her chicks under her wings and you can see how the chicks are running now because the fox came. The hen is protecting the chicks and gives her life for the chicks. That's what Jesus did for us. And it's hard to imagine that Jesus isn't still lamenting in a sense, saying to us, oh how I desired to gather you under my wings as a hen gathers her chicks. So do you know where Jesus wants us to be? If he were a hen under his wings, where he can love, comfort, and protect us. 
Okay? What do you say we have a prayer? Is that a good idea, Zach? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God. Gracious God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your comfort. We thank you for your comfort. Your protection. Your protection. And your care. Help us to find that in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to take a, a look at Jesus' brokenhearted lament. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. It is a, a natural lead-in to the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Uh, Martin Luther always has his definition and it's always brought on by the question, what is this or what does this mean? We are to fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching or God's word, but instead keep that word holy and gladly hear and learn it. Notice he did not say anything about don't work. What we find, though, is that every time there's a commandment, we humans love law. And we develop all kinds of laws to make sure we follow the law. In Evanston, Illinois, in 1875, they made a law banning, and this was precipitated by some church folk, especially from one particular denomination. They stopped, they, they made it a law that you could not serve ice cream sodas on Sunday. And the reason was, of course, that effervescent soda water had to be intoxicating because it was so popular. And people would, uh, you know, be strolling with their sweetheart and stop at the local um, soda shop, which was the drugstore, and families and children, youth, would go and hang out there. And they, so the, the town was shocked of course, the drugstore was shocked, so an inventive uh, um, soda jerk took and started pouring syrup over ice cream and it became known as the Sunday. Then they banned the use of the name Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-Y, as being sacrilegious, so they have S-U-N-D-A-E. Isn't it silly what we do with laws? And we know what the Puritans did. Find two lovers who are sitting together on Sunday under an apple tree. A soldier wet a piece of an old hat and shoved it into his boot so he could walk. Find him 40 shillings for doing heavy work. A... Um, a captain came home after a th three-year voyage in a ship and happened to kiss his wife on the doorstep. He was put in stocks for two hours. We love laws. We go crazy with laws. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Well, let's make all kinds of laws to make sure people do that. 
Jesus and the Pharisees had a different idea about law. The disciples, <clears throat> Jesus and the disciples were walking through a wheat field and it happened to be the Sabbath day and the disciples would reach down and pluck off a head of, of wheat and then they'd rub it in their hands and eat the grains. And of course, they were called on that. It wasn't illegal to eat on the Sabbath. It was illegal to thrash the grain. So they were working. And what did Jesus say? Jesus used an example of David. That, that David went into the temple and did something that was not lawful. He went and took the showbread, the very bread that was made from the grain that was given as a sacrifice. Only the high priests, only the priests could eat that grain, the bread that was made from that grain. David took it and he ate it and fed his companions. And Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind, for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was given to benefit you and I. Let's look at the work, rest, or the, the rest work rhythm. Starts out in Genesis, God uh, creates on the first day. He's, first we see the power of God's word, let there be light, there was light, and there was morning and evening the first day. Excuse me, there was evening and morning the first day. <clears throat> Second day, let there be a dome. God created the sky. And after all that, there was evening and morning the second day. Third day, let the waters be gathered into one place, so a dry land was created on the third day. And there was evening. Do you see a rhythm here? Evening and morning, the third day. God developed a rhythm in creation which is mirrored in our lives. There is evening, a time for recreation and rest. And then morning, a time for work. He gives both to us. Now on the seventh day, yeah, so we have evening, morning, rest and work, rest and work, and was the rest for God? Did God sleep at night? See, we anthropomorphize God so that God will look like us, look human, and that way we can understand God. But hopefully our understanding is that God is not sleeping. Even on the seventh day, when God rested, did he sleep that day? Or was he creating something for us that we see the rhythm of our life and we need that day of rest? Jesus says, the Sabbath is for us. God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work he had done in creation. And again, it seems that that rhythm, that day of rest was given for us. God gave us a work, a rest work rhythm and a day of rest because it's good for us. Jesus said it was given for humankind. We weren't created for the Sabbath. But we also need useful work. We need a sense of purpose. Useful work. You need to have that daily rhythm of rest and work. They say Statistics have indicated 
that if you retire and you don't develop a good rest work routine after retirement, which is not easy to do, the statistics are that within two years you will have a major illness. Two years. Wow. So we need useful work. What did the Apostle Paul say about it? He was talking to those uh, Thessalonians who thought Jesus was going to come any moment. So some of them said, why work? You make supper tonight. And Paul says, you didn't see that model in our lives. We worked when we were with you. Night and day we worked, he said. We didn't take any money from you, even though it was our right to take money. But we worked so you would understand that that's the way of life. Work is good for you. So we need rest. And we need work. They're both given to us. It's a rhythm in life that God gives us. So what about the, the Sabbath? What about rest? We do need a time when we're doing something other than what we do for a living. Something that doesn't merely give us recreation, but it recreates us. We feel better after we do it. Now, is that what we're supposed to do on Sunday morning? Or Saturday night? I wish we had a regular Wednesday night worship service. There is something that we get from worship that we get nowhere else. We hear that voice from God Almighty beckoning us to come and be sheltered under his wings. We hear that no place else. It used to be years ago, back in the 90s, 98, I remember, Stan Nelson and a few others would take me fishing. And oh, I just hoped I didn't catch a fish to ruin this boat trip. And I seem to be the one that caught more fish than anybody else. But I go, oh, it's just such, just so nice to be out here and rest. If you know my life, I'm probably the worst at resting. In fact, to catch a fish, what does that trip tell you? That life is tough. That fish gasping for breath, and it can't get any breath out of the air. It needs to be in the water. Just gasping. Let us know how cruel the world is. When we come to church to hear from God, to hear that we do not have a cruel God, we have a God that loves us and cares for us, wants us to know we belong to Him, wants to be with us. So we come here and encounter God in a way that we can't encounter God anywhere else. So Jesus' heart is broken <clears throat> as he laments over Jerusalem. And I just wonder, does he lament over us? How often have I desired to gather your children together, all of us together, as a hand gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Jesus weeps over us. I have some reflections here from Janet Hunt, and they're good reflections, but I'm not going to share those with you. I slept on it. I'm going to share something else. What is your desire in life? God wants to give us a sense of purpose even if we don't have a job. Every day of our lives should have a sense of purpose. And what is that purpose? As we gather here, hopefully, what you want is others to know the mercy 
grace and love of God. Hopefully you want others to hear that beck and call of Jesus to gather us under his wings. Frank Lubach, in his books, Letters by a Modern Mystic. By the way, this came from the book I recommended reading for Lent. There's one copy left out on the um, Welcome Center. Frank Lubach, Letters by a Modern Mystic. He tells a story. He was a Christian missionary in the 1930s in the Philippines. Philippines, mostly Muslim. And he said uh, he went, went to live and serve among the morose people in an alien land with a language foreign to his native tongue and religious system. They did not appreciate him. They did not respect his spiritual journey, his Christianity. He did not fully understand theirs. So this is what he did. He went back to the monastery to have an encounter with God, to see what God wanted him to do. And here's his conclusion. The journey led him deeper into the heart of God and more intimately, he wanted to be more intimately connected with him and the people he served. Here is his transformative insight. They must see God in me and I must see God in them. Wow! They must see God in me, and I must see God in them. Not to change the name of their religion, but to take their hand and say, Come, let us look for God. They must see God in me. Well, we come to worship, hopefully, so that when we leave here, people can get a grasp of God if, for no other reason, they see God in us. The third commandment, remember the Sabbath day. Don't neglect God's word the gathering of saints, or the preaching of God's word. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God in prayer for all who cry out in pain and hope. Your church seeks your face, O God, and our hearts are unafraid in you. Gather your children together from across the world as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, that all may see you and bless your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. For the beauty of the stars, we turn to you in thanksgiving, O Lord. By their vast number and light, remind us of your covenant with Abram and deep love for all creation. Lord, in your mercy. For peace and justice in our country, we turn to you, O Lord. We thank you for the life and work of Justice Scalia. Give courage and wisdom to those in authority as a new justice is found. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick in our congregation and in our community, we turn to you, O Lord. Gather all who live with illness under your wings, especially Jamie Alexander, Harrison James Carroll, Marilyn Boston, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Dorothy, Jennifer R., Ron Fells, Christy Harrison, Debbie Huff, Alan Malcolm, Chris Marquardt, Willis Melgren, Gerald Muller, Denise Newbold, Leon Parker, Margaret Schwab, and Bennett Shanks. Are there any others? Make us instruments of your healing. Your resurrection power brings hope to the living and new life to the dead. We remember especially Louise Martin, Harriet Smith, Jean Strand, and the father of Mark Steinecke. Lord, in your mercy. To you, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. God, we thank you for gathering and feeding us as a mother hen embraces her young. Release us now to go on our way in these 40 days, ready to see our work as prayer, ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Looks like we have a couple of announcements. I wanted to... You need to hold it high. Oh, hold it high. Can you hear me? There we go. Okay, I wanted to make an announcement quick. We have part two of the Messiah Youth Bake Sale. We had part one last week, but a lot of us were unable to bake our goods and make it because of the weather. So we have a lot of fresh baked goods out there this morning. We have a couple of things. The Wo Can you hear me? There we go. Jeff. The Wogan family generously brought um, our regular items that we have during the Sunday school hour. So we have a lot of things on plates that you can enjoy during the Sunday school hour. Then we also have a lot of packaged goods that you can take home with you today. So these are just a few of our youth that we are sending to camp. We have between 25 and 35 that we are trying to send to camp. And a third of that the families pay. A third of it comes from the church budget. And then a third comes from fundraising. So this is that fundraising piece that we're doing today. So anyway, it's an amazing experience. We hope you'll stop by the table. Thank you. And it's free will donation. So just whatever you would like to donate, we would very much appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to invite all the woodworkers to meet with me at, in between the services. This will be our first meeting. It's kind of a get together to kind of share some stories about woodworking and have fellowship and start a group. Excellent. Um, my class. We'll meet in the fellowship hall, and our theme today is, we're, we're studying Islam, and it is what the Muslims think about Jews and Christians. I guess it's Jews, Christians, and Islam. And then I would also recommend you read your messenger. Don't forget, there will be... Um, a, Wednesday midweek Lenten worship both at noon and at 7 uh, we'll be on the fourth commandment won't we then um, Louise Martin's funeral will be Thursday 1130 right here receive this benediction the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.